So this isn't really an, a review as such. I suppose you could use it as a review. I bought it out of interest, really. I mean, it, uh, and it also uh, hit one of my criteria, which was, you know, cheap. And uh, it's the sort of thing I'm interested in. So I, I, I sort of bought it impulse buy from AliExpress. So I got this from AliExpress, but it's Spot Pair is the company that, uh, I don't know if they make it or just supply it, but that's where all the information is, Spot Pair. So this is what you get. Uh, there's just a tiny little leaflet in there saying Spot Pair with a scannable link. And uh, here it is. It, uh, it is, there's two components that you don't get in there, which is the Raspberry Pi. You'll need to, Raspberry Pi obviously use the two if you can, and a battery. It doesn't actually tell you what battery though, which is annoying. So it doesn't tell you the size. Um, I, think I know that connector is right, but I don't know if that's gonna, I doubt very much that's gonna fit in there. We'll see. Anyway, let's have a look at it. Yeah, I was just curious. I bought this just out of curiosity, really. So let's have a look. So yeah, a lot of buttons. Uh, is it going to focus? So we've got a couple of shoulder buttons there, audio jack, headphone jack, sorry, uh, charging, which is the old USB style, and on off at the top there. A lot of buttons with gold finish, which is nice. And then a huge, huge amount of components on the back here, huge uh, component count which is always nice to see. Somebody's, somebody's really taken a bit of time with this by the looks of it anyway. So you've got a, I looked a couple of these things up. You've got a lithium charge um, IC there. This, I couldn't find out what it was, just a bunch of numbers on it. But because of its proximity with this and these large capacitors, I'm assuming this is a DC-DC buck converter and, uh, you know, um, upping the voltage to five volts for the Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi actually will work just with a battery directly connected to it, but obviously this is the, the better option. Um, is that a fuse? I don't know, something with a zero on it. Is zero ohm resistor or a fuse? It's a resettable fuse, but I don't know. Anyway, a huge bunch of capacitors there. These ones I didn't look at them or find out. A uh, huge, huge amount of capacitors here. Um, this one's the audio audio amp there. And this is a 8-bit microcontroller, which I assume is the uh, an I/O expander, because you got so many buttons there. I don't think uh, you could do this amount of push buttons with the zero without a an I/O expander. So that, I'm assuming that's what it is. Anyway, yeah, well made. So it appears to be well made. Anyway, and somebody's you know spent the extra money. You know, the gold finish adds a little bit to the costs and. Uh, Component count is high, so um, and I mean, I'm saying that because <clears throat> um, one of the earlier, early, early um, Raspberry Pi Zero projects was this one, which is the uh, Tiny Pi, and uh, 2017, I would say, you know, first kind of batch pioneers, <laughs> if you want to call them that. So some of you old guys are going to remember this. He, this, this one guy did a, he did a Tiny Pi, and then he did a Tiny Pi Pro, which he was closed source and he just sold them uh, about 75 quid each was 80 quid or something uh, but yeah this was the open source one but anyway long story um this is the pcb for it and if you see on that there's zero capacity uh, zero components additional components you basically just you soldered the pie to the board and then the and then the buttons and the joystick and the screen that was it there's a space for a led and a capacitor and a sorry a resistor which were optional. So you can actually make uh, a retro handheld with nothing, with no components at all. But to get this amount of buttons, obviously you're gonna need something, and this is the right way to do it, obviously. He did have a charger, having said that, he did have a charger in the back there. There's a bog standard 4056 charging board. You can just see it through the plastic. Anyway, back to this. Uh, so yeah, that looks pretty well made. And then you have a little little kit for the case, which uses sort of rubber uh, rubber buttons, and uh, you've got a standoffs, screwdriver. There is a there is a guide which I've, I've sort of bothered to print off. So it's just an assembly of the case, 
there's a lot of wasted paper here <laughs> but uh oh yeah there's the battery so that's the battery they're recommending which is you can't see what it is in the picture but i suspect that it's a lot thinner than this thing i thought unfortunately so anyway i'm not too interested in you know having this i really wanted to just kind of i was thinking of back engineering it or just um just checking it out but anyway let's get, let's get the uh some pins soldered to the pie and then get an image on there see what happens well i lost a bit of footage because i uh i got the audio messed up but uh it's probably just as well really uh yeah so put it together it works there's a couple of image files um, on the spot pair site and they both work i wouldn't really recommend this to anybody really i mean these these times are over really i mean i, th I think if you're making something from scratch for yourself using a raspberry pi that's a different kettle of fish because you're you know there's a sense of achievement there but uh to just get something like this is uh the performance isn't there really. You just buy any twenty-pound um, handheld retro gaming handheld from AliExpress is going to outperform this basically. Um, other issues are the uh, it was in some of the footage that I deleted, but uh, I had to use a square um, sander, whatever sander, yeah, that'll <laughs> do, um, because the these rubber feet on the left here were all way too tight. So I had to sand quite considerable amount off to get those feet through. The top two buttons are still pretty stiff. I might as well keep yakking while it's booting. That shows you how long. This is the alternate. This is the, uh, what do you call it? This is the Diet Pie version. Uh, they both boot up really, really slowly. Uh, the buttons are horrible, <laughs> mushy. I mean, they're just rubber. You can do rubber right, you know, this is the uh, Pocket Pikachu and it does have some rubber buttons and they feel absolutely fine. They're, they're short, they feel good. Controller's uh, plastic, but on here the, the, the buttons are like long stalks and they tend to bend over. They just feel pretty horrible. Anyway, <clears throat> as I said, it was more of a, you know, you can't, the screen, I think, Going to down to this sort of size, uh, it's very difficult with the menus. It is the same size screen as this, but it's uh, very difficult to... Uh, you can change that by customising RetroPie. I'm sounding pretty down on it, but, you know, I've got to be honest. <laughs> I just don't get one unless you're just interested in the, you know, how they've, how they've made it. Yeah, but I suppose at the end of the day it works, and it was very, very cheap. But yeah, you really want to have something with better buttons, a bigger screen, you know, two two inch screen and above, really. What's that? Oh yeah. Sound actually not too bad. It's quiet. I don't know whether the uh, haven't found the volume control on it. So yeah, it just looks nice. <laughs> You've got a weird mismatch here of, of uh, screws and uh, screws and nuts on the back. They never show you the back, strangely. <laughs> I suppose for games like this, it's fine. Really simple games like this. Uh, hello. Come on. Wow, that's going to... Somebody's going to feel pain looking at that. <laughs> ah, there we go. There is a pause. Yeah. So anyway, that was it. Um, interesting. That, you know, the electronic side, well made, I think. And, uh, you know, I might be able to get some ideas from that. Uh, but yeah, I just sort of show it off. Thanks for watching.